Prime Minister John Key has brought back the titles of Sir and Dame to the New Zealand Honours System. Helen Clark did away with them in 2000, replacing them with new honours called Principal and Distinguished Companions. People who received those honours will now have the opportunity to accept a title if they want. Libby Middlebrook joins us live from Government House. Libby. Hamish, 85 people have been made principal and distinguished companions over the last nine years, many of them here at Government House, but not all of them are keen on the idea of becoming a sir or a dame. Colin Meads is what's called a distinguished companion, but he's never considered himself to be all that distinguished. Still just ordinary Colin Meads and say what I think and uh, have a few beers down the club too often, the wife tells me. He's now entitled to become Sir Colin if he wants to, but he's not sure it sounds like something for him. I still live in Tikawiti and all my mates around here might give me a hard time. <laughs> John Key's announced he's bringing back knighthoods and damehoods, meaning our best and brightest will again be granted the titles of Sir and Dame. Roughly uh, every year, six or seven New Zealanders are selected and given a very high honour to recognise and celebrate the success of a lifetime of service and achievement. And it's my view that that visible titular honour is a way of publicly celebrating their achievements. Helen Clark scrapped the titles nine years ago, saying they overshadowed another of our highest honours, the Order of New Zealand. Instead, people were made principal or distinguished companions, honours that Key believes have no resonance with New Zealanders. It's my view that they found that quite uh, confusing. Uh, there wasn't a visible recognition of such distinguished honours. The Queen's already given her approval and the titles will be offered retrospectively to those awarded under the old honours system. The response from others was mixed. We're quite ambivalent to the whole thing. Um, there are a lot of republics in the world that have titular honours, so it, it wouldn't be impossible for New Zealand to be a republic and have, have knighthoods and damehoods. Um, I think that's a good thing, to carry on that sort of tradition. So I'd be pleased actually to see it coming back. British knighthoods are honours. Don't mean a great deal out here. Distinguished companion Dr Ranganui Walker used to be scathing of knighthoods because of the wealthy businessmen who were getting them. I didn't want to be... Uh, in the same boat as people like uh, uh, Sir Michael Fay, uh, Sir Roger Douglas, uh, I felt that the knighthood system had been rather uh, denigrated or degraded. But now he's softened his stance and hasn't ruled out upgrading his honour to a sir. Very often they get upgraded and get number one service. So that's one of the perks that goes with knighthoods, I guess. Hamish, new knights and dames will be appointed in the Queen's birthday honours list here in June. And as we said earlier, 85 people will have the chance to take up the titles if they choose to do so at any time in their lives. The only people who won't qualify are five who are received honours under the old system but have since died. Libby, do we know what the take-up might be? Well, we've done a ring around and nobody's ruled it out yet. And while some like Holomedes aren't too sure about the idea of becoming a sir, others we've spoken to say titles can open doors. In fact, cancer researcher Professor Peter Gluckman told us that our titles can be of great value in terms of gaining recognition when working overseas. Libby, thank you.